Witches is mad at you for not having to cancel you. Oh, the lobby's starting! Yeah, we th we in there. We in there. Dragonshire, ladies and gentlemen. First pick, first ban to imported support in the red. So, Tonka Band's pretty popular on this map. Uh, but we've also been denied Genji infinitely, so, yep. We won't get to cast Genji today, man. For good reasons. He is bonkers McBonkensteins. Too good. Uh, I've seen situations where Genji will, like, grab, say, the top shrine, and then he'll just jump over the wall, run a little bit, and E, and he's at the dragon. He gets he can rotate Damn. so insanely fast. It's it blows my mind. They snapped that Anubarak. Yeah, uh, he, they didn't even wait. Actually, just a beast. What's the donation level needed to get Zoya a new computer? Like three thousand dollars. <laughs> 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 no, one day, one day I'll have an up to date PC. Let us see the Uther picked up. I mean. We've been talking about all day with the mouth nerfs. Uther is really the top tier support right now. Mm -hmm. um, Ariel a little bit behind. I wouldn't say Ariel's the same tier as Uther. Um, yeah, Ariel just has it's like pretty close. She's just a little more reliant on composition. Yeah, and you can put Uther in almost anything. Yeah, I but mean, you need the Oriel combo. Uther Joe. Yeah. Which team's on which side, by the way? This is know? four guys in legend on the left. So they went with their job. Okay, that's what I. That's why I asked. I didn't know if they swapped side because that's a very four guys in a LZ gamer strat to do. Four it's guys like, in an emo Uther Johanna. and like a Joe, like a Joe, you know. Or last game it was Uther Tyrael, right? Like uh, they, they, yeah. It just that's why I asked. It made sense. That looked like them. Mm -hmm. Important support with their next two picks. Will we see the Valario? Hmm. So the thing about Valario, I think it'd be I think it'd be Goldario at this point because Goldan did well, really well on this map last time. Yeah, it's a good map for Goldan, and if you're already showing Johanna, you're showing blinds that really hinders good Vala. Point. And then if they're showing Johanna, they, they're also kind of threatening that Cassia again. So Ariel, that's a yes. They're just going to go main, and they're going to leave that hope generator open. Um, I kind of like that because they could totally run Ariel. They could totally run Gul or uh, Lunara or Gul'dan or Vala, maybe. Um, we'll have to see what these bands look like, though. Is this, like, this is the first main game today, isn't it? Um, yeah, he's been banned some, and then not picked some. That's well, we have, we have plenty of globals still available, both Falstead and uh, DeHawk are on the table, so those are potential bans right now. As it is Dragonshire. Mm -hmm. Globals are valued on every map, but uh, extra valued on the map with the most important shrine control. Leoric. Now, I'm curious as to how often these two scrim each other. How much of this is mind games, you know? Probably you said important support obviously. hasn't been competing for a while, but I'm curious if they've been scrimming for a while. Yeah, I have no idea what their current status is in terms of the... No, stop banning Malthill! Are they hovering Stop him? It. You can see the hover. I can't. It feels bad. Yeah, they're hovering mouthfeel. Oh, nope. They swapped to the Haka. Okay, we'll just wait till they lock it in. There it is. Okay, it will be the Haka ban. So we might get to see Malthel. He has made it through the bands. I'm actually hyped about that. And there's no top line picked up for uh, four guys in a legend. And... 
They did not play it earlier. They played against it with the diva. Correct. And LZ's diva has been pretty on point. So if they're worried about a mouthfeel pick with how well LZ played versus the mouthfeel earlier in lane, I could see them just locking in diva and X here and not worrying about the mouthfeel because LZ did show that he knew how to play around it. And actually kind of punished it. Yeah, he did. Um, just an update on the other side of the bracket. Buttered Toast is up 1-0 over Firm Handshake. Firm Handshake is... Uh, DC is vestige. Firm Hake, Shank Feet, Flame is uh, light, lame. Yeah. Nice. They're not a team to sleep on at all. Well, there's the Gul'dan Cassia. Cho'Gall. What did I say about imported support? They're a team that plays Cho'Gall, and I actually wasn't expecting it for whatever reason in this situation, but that is Same. one of the, the you know, arguably the best target for Ariel since she's getting oh, yeah. hope generated from two players. So uh, it's, it's, this is kind of a weird situation because you look at their solo lane, it's, it's a new Barak. And then it's a, it's a, it's a roam of Cho'Gal, Ariel, and Greymane. Um, but Cassia has the, the added bonus of blinds from Johanna. And blinds from any other character, still, her trait still gets that benefit for the additional yeah. power. So the Diablo bays will have the harmony Gul'dan is going to have Mega Clear to help keep up with the Cho'Gall. But how do they kill Man, it? Man, this Leoric ban is really uh, well a right now. <laughs> yeah, the Leo their ban own, hurt them. Their own Leo ban ended up uh, enabling this. If Leo was up right now, and I Green wonder Main, if they would have banned it. The Green Mane snap steals like, all right, well, we got Curse Bullet. Like you said, yeah. the Leo ban hurts them. And I, it's like four guys in a legend like forgot that imported plays to Gaul. Yeah, it was a little oversight, but we got a mouth fail. Hypa, hypa. How will that do? Um, I don't know. And it's LZ's mouth fail, too. I'm excited to check it out. Okay. We're going into game number two, guys, here. Four guys in a legend up 1 0. And uh, this is imported sports first and only attempt at the bloodlust qualifiers and i don't know for sure because i haven't looked at the stats but i'm assuming if they don't win this one their chances are low hmm. of making it in it's i, I yeah i'm not certain uh, i don't want to say anything for sure because there's so many teams definitely help that, their odds if they made it to the finals at least yeah there's just been so many inconsistent teams like the fact right. that rob boss can't flub one two and then as different squads that counts as like their points are all just lost right, right. so that really makes um, it a lot different. We got the angry cloud. We got the sad cloud. Esports, boys. I like the sad cloud. Okay, here on the left-hand side, up on the O is four guys and a legend, Jake Carino. Their they opponents fly. imported support. And uh, this is game number two. So stakes are high. Map is Dragon Shy. You expect that late game. And it's, it's, about, it's about time that we see... This this classic Cho'Gall, you know, Rome style from imported support once again. Haven't seen it in over a month now, and I love watching them play their Cho'Gall because they just they just bully. I'm excited for the mouth though. I want to see what else they can do with it. The mouth that we saw earlier got shut down pretty hard. I'm hoping that's not the case here. It's gonna be tough though. It imports, like you said, their Cho'Gall is one to be feared. Yeah, they'll, they'll build into that Rune Bomb, and that Rune Bomb will get so farmed up um, that it's just absolutely explosive. Like, literally, it's, uh, it's something you really got to watch out for. Well, we'll have to see... Uh how they plan on playing around the Cho'Gal. Oh, man, getting... Getting late, Jake. I'm sorry, it's late, my boy. Jake. That's almost a rhyme. Late, Jake. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> they both ended with the E. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, Shrine Tab spawned here, and uh, Slice Blade with the uh, the small advantage right now versus Crux in the top lane. Doing a good job of bullying the Anu. 
Uh, bottom lane though, it's gonna be they're gonna need a pick. I feel if they're gonna force the chill ball off of this. And I don't know if they're going to be able to get it until later in the game. I think this is just going to be kind of a, a kind of just like a stalled out, let's soak lanes game until someone makes a mistake. It tends to be how it goes with Chugal. You just try to put the pressure on. Um, I mean, if they can really pressure Elaheim's mana pool, that can work out well for them. But that's not going to be an easy thing to do when you can roam and collect globes in two lanes. Really helps you with maintaining that mana. Um, Ring of Leech has been picked up here for Cassia. Looking for that, all of that sustain. When it, it just again, that's just playing on the Johanna harmony. We do see Black Harvest was picked up here for uh, LZ Gamer on that Malthale. The only really kill target they have is FC Ignition. Um, they might be able to get a kill on the RL if they try really hard, but it seems too hard. Look at how fast she gets home, though. It's insane. Yeah. She's like instantly getting it topped off. Not the best trade there coming out for a four guys in a in a bad fall stead. In a bad fall but stead. Just poking fun of my friend Picante. But uh, Picante is able to secure the bottom shrine here. While Greymane was doing those giants. Yeah, but, but there's uh, no chance of capturing this for yeah. such a like. Just too much poke available. The idea now rotating down here to the bottom. Those giants have pushed in behind this. Ignition is going to be able to bait out that corruption. And it has turned red. Swallows Magoo was left alone in a 3v1 situation, but able to play safe enough. Elheim so close yet so far from being in range for the Hammer of Justice. They're going to find the rotation with RL separated. This is a, a nice little moment here with, with the 4-4 four, four, four in the bottom now. But uh, unfortunately, unable to properly get in there to attempt the seclusion because Chugal, you know, he does have that surging fist to really disperse those kind of moments. So right now, there's two advantages on the map. One, the advantage for Important, which is in the rotations because the Chugal, Ariel, it's, they're just controlling the rotations completely, and four guys on Logic can't do anything in it. But the other is the top lane, and Slice Blade has been doing a really solid job versus Crux. He's winning the lane. He's uh, forcing Crux to play very passively, and the towers are out of ammo. So, advantage-wise, while more damage has been done, ooh, Picante might actually die here. Yeah, he's gonna go down. So that's gonna be the first blood. Good. Uh, thinking the that the uh, T tours Gray Main had left, but uh, I could make just Zoya ops. No, I'm being very lazy right now with my ops. <laughs> Oh, LZ taking a lot of damage. Um, we can see Bombs Away is up to 11 right now. Once you hit the 20 heroes, the range and speed of Shogal's Room Bomb is increased by 20%. Oh, Slice Blade. Probably going to go down here on the top lane. Nice rotation from Greymane. Oh, Crux, your nuts, dog! All right. I lied. <laughs> yeah, that blind came through, and then Greymane was just no longer a threat. Jin came around the corner, and yeah. G to the G. Double kill in the top lane. Uh, giving a nice experience lead here to four guys and a legend who are currently poised to get that 2-0. That oh, it's still far, far away, but they might be able to grab that level 10 advantage, pick up a dragon, and start to throw that snowball experience in their favor. Yeah, this is about a half level lead right now. It's pretty significant for you know a game that's been overall, I don't know if stale is the right word, but you know, passive. Mm -hmm. um, having a half level lead is a pretty big advantage. It's it's a, it's a full level lead at this point just because of the, the way the experience walked in. And the idea on the run, Ooh. Jin gets the, the Q in. The condemn oh, just out just of reach. barely. If that was started like 0.25 seconds sooner, Chogal probably would have died there. Uh, but the Greyman was Valkyrie. able to rotate down, secure that bottom. It's Yeah, Valkyrie. Interesting. That's for Chogal. Um, or, or Ariel. Um, Oriel, yeah. You, you force out that Crystal Aegis at the start of the fight. Even Gray main too. Yeah. I'm cur I'm curious. I'm excited to see uh, how uh, Slice Blade is going to uh, use it. Yeah, because we saw a really nice uh, ball lightning in that last game. Jin does juke the curse bullet of ignition. Drops a little silf silly. Now, how does uh, Tormented Souls fare versus like a Cho'Gall comp? I couldn't tell you. I've never it, seen it. 
Not in this situation. It, in theory, it's better versus like more bodies, right? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, it, the, the more bodies means more damage, more sustain from his Q. So um, technically, it's be worse, that big but of a difference. It's still no. It's it's still the better option in terms of the heroic. Yeah. So. Wow, LZ taking a lot of damage there. And there comes the Shadow Ball Volley out. Uh, going after Picante. Elheim going to be uh, body blocking that, though. Switchblade is just, like, laughing at Crux in the air in the top. He's like, what that are you going to do? This is so nice for uh Did you call him Switchblade? Sliceblade. I did say Switchblade. <laughs> I was like, damn, have I been reading this guy's name wrong the entire time? Switchblade is a guy that used to be in the channel all the time. I haven't seen him in a while. Rip Swishblade. I think he plays Overwatch now or something. <laughs> I'm excited that you know this about the guy. Ah, oh, he's a cool dude. Well, wherever you are, Swishblade, we're thinking about you, man. <laughs> You're in our hearts and our minds. Goldan's going to be capping or attempting to cap it, but uh, going to back off immediately. Uh, FC Ignition going to be securing the giant camp again this game for his team. And, uh, they don't have much time. If Importer wants to make a play happen, they got about 15 seconds before level 15 is picked up here for a four guys. And uh, it doesn't look like it's going to matter because LZ Game are going to secure the first Dragon Eye of the game eight minutes in. Yep, there it is. Jin on the retreat. Shut up, Volley! Forcing out the D shield. So Jin will be able to walk away one for one of the ultimates. And that dragon already wailing away. Level 13 has been attained by four guys in the legend, and they are in the driver's seat. But LZ Gamer not going to be able to finish this off uh, without being contested heavily. You see that Dragon's HP is falling rapidly. Surging Fist thrown on in. Where's the punt? Not going to use it. Just going to throw out that final Q as he leaves. Fort will live on. And yeah, not the best Dragon there. I like their strategy, right? The plan was to just get minimum value of the Dragon Knight while you split push other lanes. And you could have stalled that out another 40, 50 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he just kind of face rolled into that, realized that he couldn't even get it, and then got bodied. Um, so almost oh. a waste of DK there. Surging Fist was used. Nice curse pull going in on to Jin, but the Valkyrie pulls it to go back, forcing up that Crystal Aegis. Oh, big damage coming in from Slice Blade, and now with Chogal being locked in. Mouthville actually was there to buy a block if needed. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. Um... Cassie, uh, we're starting to see the value of the Valkyrie here. The Valkyrie forces Aegis to be used on whatever target. Doesn't matter, Cho, Anub, whoever. It forces that to be used, and then they just swap to the next target and kill that person because they're not like, you know, a one shot burst team. They're, I'm going to kill you because we have a lot of damage team. And. That's what happened. Crooks, your ripperoni pepper cheese, man. He had to use Cocoon as well. I mean, it's They're just, just getting picked apart. Yeah. Like that's Suddenly a two-level lead. Definitely Pretty. a tough spot here. Four guys in the legend in a wonderful spot. On the other hand, at 16, they're about to crest on into it. And uh, let's check out that APM, Zoya. Look at that Utha APM. Excuse me. I refuse to call him that. His name's Matre. Damn. Tilted. Butter Toast, uh, based off of the website, says they won 2-0. I don't know if that's accurate. Yeah, it should be. Uh, if the website no. says it, should be good. Butter Toast going to move on to the finals to play the winner of this set. Yeah. A little update for the chat. Level 16 picked up here, a 4-4 guys and a legend. And uh, that's right as the shrines are spawning. We'll see if they can make something happen with this. So uh, pretty significant time window they have where they have a pretty big advantage. Cassia, fight. yeah, just once again, just constantly bullying this. Oh, the fear! No fear. Uh, with, with, yeah, and there is a fear as well. Is Chogal gonna go down here? LZ goes. LZ. Inside. Shadow Ball Volley has uh, been used here, and that's not going to uh, be a kill there. Um, what? So Horrify and Blessed Shield were both used in that fight, um, and only Shadow Bolt Volley was used from Chogal. So could have been a worse trade. Could have been worse. Or imported. Both will be blue for the moment. Ignition. It uh, just kind of, yeah, dancing around, waiting for his team. Now he's going to step on the point to make sure Dragon is not picked up here by LZ. Noob's already on the rotate up to mid. 
And despite the two level lead, Jake, they're only down one fort at the moment, so Right, but uh. that's honestly it's it's a it's a blessing and it's a curse because they're so low to falling once they fall that experience that they're already behind is gonna like just swing even further in the opposite side if they lose a team fight. And they're in that window where it's 17 to 15. They're they're just they just have to recoil. Silk experience hit level 16. Yeah. That's where that where you said that if they lose a team fight, right? Like right. this is the window of opportunity they have where if they don't lose that team fight and win it, because they're in the situation where they haven't lost too much. They're not out of the game yet. Nope. But uh this this so team fight right here is very important. Surging Fist, or the um, Hammer of Twilight was used there. So it's a short cooldown, eight more seconds. Oh my god, the fear back. was great. Nicely done from Picante. Divine Shield's going to keep Slice Blade alive. Uh, Jin goes in for a big condemn. Ooh. LZ Gamer pops up, and wow, that is a lot of damage. FC Ignition is going to go down, and that is going to be another Dragonite secured. And this is bad. Um, this is what we were fight. worried about. 16... Yep. Look how close they were. They were so close to 16, but the fight was forced, and they just could not fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with their opponents. This dragon is going to be so hard to defend. That fear from Picante, the really outpositioned Oriel, um, and you know the follow-up stun from Uther, they were just able to burst her down so fast. They, they didn't have a chance in that fight once that uh, Howling Terror, uh, or Horrified Human, they, um, landed. Uh, but the, this keep definitely going to go down here. Don't think they'll be able to uh, pressure core or no. anything else with it. But uh, so first keep of the game, man. Yeah, and 13 minutes in on Dragonshire, like that's that's actually not that common to have a keep go down that quickly. Very strong lead, about three levels up. You see the burrow trying to keep the chase on here. Bless Shield was spent in their attempts to retreat safely. Huge damage as that goes out. When oh, they do manage to pop. The, uh, the mouthfeel in the backside, they're going to get the double kill onto Cassia. All of the damage has been removed. So this is the moment in which they find an opportunity to try to bring things back. Yeah, I think they're just going to go for, again, this is smart. They're soaking the three lanes. They got Grey Main bottom, they got uh, Crux top, and then the others in mid. You know, they're, they're maximizing their experience. They need, like, their goal does not need to be, you know, anything but getting 20 as soon as possible. They have to catch up to their opponent before the next shrine spawn. And they're doing a good job. They, they were soaking all three lanes, and Ubrak is now rotating into mid. Um, they could snipe some mercenary camps just to get some, get some additional map control. Looks like they're trying to rotate down onto Picanti, but no, a cocoon was used. They have to wait for that to expire, though. And a noob's in position. Damage from the Chogal. Oh, oh, the Divine nice Shield! Divine just a shield little bit too slow. Barely. Picante gonna live there, but now we have a really awkward position. Good cleanse, or a good uh, Iron Skin popped onto uh, Joe, but uh, it ain't gonna matter. He's gonna end up it's, falling They still there. spent a ton to get that. Um, that's 60 seconds, Jake. That's That buys them time to get closer to 20, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be as the Shrines are spawning. So while they did pop a lot for that, that's a long time Joe's did. I think it's worth. Yeah, 40 more seconds. Uh, right now, we do have Cassia getting all this split soak value. Picanti's working on a, a bruiser camp. They will be able to defend their bottom. Uh, Cassia should be leaving after this wave of minions, just you know, kind of realizing, well, they've, they've left that bottom lane time to get to a safer location and level 20 locked in. Haunt, man. You, you mentioned that Horrify earlier. That was really impactful. Well, Haunt just makes it that much more yeah. spooky. Gives you a bigger time window to get your Uther in range of the Oriole for the stun. Head uh, easier to secure that kill. Coon does end up going down here. LZ Gamer uh, trying to keep his team alive here. He's taking a lot of damage. This m it might be really That's bad game. for her. like that haunt with the Shadow Ball Volley. That three man haunt. They all stacked on top of the cocoon, and haunt was just mega juicy. Oh, I forgot that there was actually the redemption here for Uther. Maybe they can stay alive. A beautiful play there from Slice Blade. Wow, they're actually turning this around. Um, they ended up getting the kill onto the Oriole here. Yeah, that, that, that was huge. Redemption. That 20 kept them in that. Um, Redemption was, was a, a lifesaver, but it's 20 to 20 now. Yeah, the game is evened up, and I think this should be a guaranteed Dragonite. Mm, it's going to be close. Because it's, it's three versus four, technically, for... Jin's trying uh, to get on gonna, the point. Yeah, they're going to get on the point. They, they can deny this. 
Okay, so they're not going to get hit with a DK, which means they're still up a keep. They got knights that did some serious damage top lane, so that yeah. keep is uh, exposed now. All right, so good. It was that was like you said. You 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 were looking to call core there, and if that would have gone one more step sour, that was bad for, for redemption guys was legend. a lifesaver, and that's on cooldown yeah. for basically forever. Two more minutes. Um, basically forever. Two more minutes. <laughs> the world Jake lives in. <laughs> Microwaving a hot pocket takes oh, forever. <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe on the rotate. They're trying to expose this team without that Johanna. She is their essential front line. You do see uh, Slice Blade, the target of that cocoon. Once again, Johanna going for the safe rotation. They actually accidentally damaged the cocoon, lowering the time frame in which they have to save Slice Blade. And that could, yeah, cost them the Divine Shield in return. That's actually really, really tough. They wanted that cocoon to persist so Johanna could get in position. Divine Shield for a Cocoon and a Shadow Wally, that gives them a momentary advantage. Yeah, 30 seconds. Uh, that's yeah. Right now, when you're fighting over a Dragon, that's a big window. Yeah, so Greymine was able to rotate down, which is good. Uh, they were able to stall this out, but uh, looks like they're going to be... Ooh, they're, that, no one's in position to cap the DK right this second. Greymine might actually be able to sneak it in here. If no one gets on the point, this might be a... Are they going to get this? Can anyone get in range no, of this? No, they can't stop it. Wow. Really sloppy from uh, four guys in a legend. They could have been able to deny that, but there goes the fire going down. Okay, Slice Blade is the target here of Crux, but he has to back up, get back to safety. Mouthale is completely secluded from his team at the moment, too. LZ Gamer just trying to keep the push down. They do have catapults in mid if that's where the dragon goes, but the dragon should push on the bottom. It's already exposed. That's where all the Merc Camps are. Oh, we do see the damage attempted on the Cho'Gal, but the idea is able to back away. Cocoon has been spent, but the, the kill is there in Uther, and that, that redemption, not available. Oh, wow. I can't believe it's still down here. But they're turning this around. LZ Gamer doing a lot of damage. The entire backline wow. is getting low, but they have to secure the kills. Will they be able to? They get the kill on the Oriole. Uh, Cho'Gal oh, getting oh. very, very low. The DK is turning around to go chase the fight right now. And then he goes back to the keep. Oh, FC Ignition did not know if he should help his team or go for the keep. And now I think Picante might be able to save this. Um, oh, but they're going for core, Jake. Slice Blade, LZ Gamer. Okay. No one knows what they're doing in this game right now. Yeah, this is a lot of indecision. FC, FC Ignition has some indecision, and they're running back instead of backing. Slice well, Bait and they're, they're, they're making the call that if they kill Ignition, that they can just have the advantage of good Iron Skin. Ignition's going to okay, get pulled yes, in from the Condemned. Crux right. is doing his best to get here, and it looks like the peel might be, be enough. That Dragon is so, so swift on his feet. All right, so keep for a keep. Both in mid. Structure advantage is tied. Both teams still have a fort somehow. And that was without redemption, which mm -hmm. as long as Elheim doesn't get picked again, the next fight, they're going to have that redemption. Imagine if they had the it's redemption good. that fight. It's ready. Yep. Um, it would have been game. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think Important has to get a pick. Or these team fights are tough to win. I'm curious, actually. Let me take a look here. Yeah, Malfil's doing some, some nutty damage. 62k. That's, that's over Cassia. 125k I mean, from Gaul, though. Yeah, that, I mean, Gaul, Gaul doesn't count. That, that's, <laughs> that's just silliness. <laughs> that's so insane. But beating Cassia is impressive. I agree. He's been getting some money tormented souls. Oh, wow, that level 20 talent's interesting. Which one? Reaper of Souls. Yeah. I'll have to keep track of that in the next team fight to see if that actually happens. I don't think it happened last time. I think everyone died after Tormented Souls ended. But uh, this next fight, I will pay attention for it. So right now, advantage is in favor of four guys and a legend. They've got a little bit more map presence right now, just slightly. It's very even game, but yeah, it's, it's like it's a, each very team has a, has a fort standing, and they've got a little bit more lanes pushed out. And Fortnite do have bottom pushed in. 
Um, but that's not where the presence Curse is. Curse bullet was just used there. Super short cooldown. You're just going to see yeah. it zipping around. Just padding his numbers, trying to catch up to that gall. Third bro down. Bro. Flash Does blade taking a little bit of poke. Joe going for the flank. LZ Gamer taking some damage here. Oh, they need to use a Divine Shield. There's the oh. ult coming out from LZ. And LZ's teleport actually cost him that death there. Yeah. If he wanted to have teleported away from Eloheim. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Indestructible Divine Shield. Both have been used. Redemptions here. Oh, that the horrifying. The Crystal Ages. Can oh. they clean this up? Eloheim, you might want to go pop that Redemption right now. Wow. Okay, they're still holding in this. Redemption's still up. They're pushing a lane that, like, do, this push accomplishes nothing except for potentially forcing this fight. There's no structure they're pushing into. They're not going to be able to get into the keep with or the core with Gul'dan cleaning up the catapults almost instantly. Right. They're uh, just they, trying they, to keep them pressured, keep them in their base so they can get a dragon right now. That's the whole idea. Slice Blade's going to be able to hearth back, but there is no contesting either of the shrines. It's it's just a matter if they can stop the dragon in the mid. Jin can't get there in time. The Atia is going to have a free dragon. This is going to be a very hard fought defense. Mouthfeel yeah. is up in three seconds. Uh, pretty much every heroic will be ready on the offense defense, though. With the 30 seconds on yeah. Divine Shield, Horrify 20 seconds away as well. Yeah, the defense has it rough right now with the uh, heroic timers. Um, Horrify is the most important one right now. I mean, Divine Shield is also great for. But. Uh, if they can get that Horrify, that's how they're slots. And they're doing a lot of damage to this DK. It's oh. already at half HP, but there's a full HP uh, Cho'Gall in there. LZ Gamer diving the back on the DK straight on the core. And LZ's team is actually pretty split up right now. Half of them are on the DK, half of them are team fighting. And that that's was... Game. Yeah, that, I don't, that was an almost unwinnable situation here. I don't... No matter how they Like, the that. Dragon's just doing so much and Cho'Gall popping out of that. Like, how do they kill Cho'Gall here? Really well played turnaround. The Horrify comes out just as it comes off cooldown, but the core is at 10%. Burrow in, but the Itia has the DPS, and we're going to a game three. Yeah. Uh, it was a pretty almost scratch.